Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In few of my video series, we were seeing about the tutorials which are focused on the vector canoe application. So this video is focused on the capital programming. So in this video, we will be seeing some of the capital functions in detail. Also, we will see it in a live demonstration of the outputs of each capital functions in the canoe configuration. So before we go to the video, Please hit the subscribe button to get notification on future series of videos. Okay, let's jump into the video. Okay, what is Capel programming? What is Capel first of all? So Capel is nothing but a communication access programming language, which is something very similar to that of the C programming language. Uh, C is a base for the Capel programming. So Capel allows programming of network node models as well as special evaluation programs for individual application. When I meant about the special evaluation program, it is nothing but the test modules. So we can we can use the CAPL uh, programming for the network node uh, to act as a network node itself. And then also we can use the same CAPL programming in order to evaluate some of the uh, functions using the test modules. So that is what we call it as network node models and specific evaluation programs. Uh, and uh, Keno includes a Capel browser, Capel compiler as well, which compiles a created Capel file uh, with the extension of .can file. In general, whenever you create this uh, Capel uh, um, file, uh, the extension of this file will be like .can file. And when you compile it, you will uh, get a .cdf file which is an executable programming file so uh, that's on the capital so let us go uh, one by one on the uh, uh, functions uh, in detail uh, before going to it uh, firstly let me uh, show you about how to open this uh, and uh, canoe as well as uh, where we are going to work on the uh, uh, programming so first of all uh, if you have already in installed uh, Vector Canoe, so all you have to do is go to the start button and then type on uh, Canoe and you will find this application. Open this application so you will find this uh, Vector Canoe uh, will be displayed. And uh, here specifically we will be um, uh, focusing on uh, the simulation setup where we will be attaching the network nodes. So for instance, uh, now here I have attached a sample uh, network node where I will be editing the um, editing or else I will be creating the capital program. So uh, either you can create a uh, network node in the simulation setup and then you can edit it, edit from there or else also you can uh, you can open the capital browser. So capital browser when I meant this is the capital browser where you can um, type in your uh, you can code your uh, uh, capital programming and then you can execute it. Um, so this is a browser where you can write it and you can compile it. Um, so how to open this Capel browser? Uh, you will find it in the uh, C. You have to go to the C directory and then you have to go to the program files. And then uh, if you have installed Vector Cano, then go to the Vector Cano application. And then inside the Vector Cano application, you will find it in the... Uh, <coughs> okay. So inside the vector application, vector kernel application or folder, you have to go to exc executable 64, where if you go and search for capital browser, you will be able to find this executable or application itself. So uh, it's over here. So this is the file. If you double click on it, it will open in this way as a capital browser. So once if you have opened this capital browser, so we will, um, you will find the left side where you will find a tree view where you will find certain categorization like includes um, and then you have, uh, you will be finding the variables section, you will be finding the systems, you will be finding the value objects, you will be finding the can and you will be finding the functions. So these are all the different sections which we will be using as a part of our uh, code. So as you do the coding, uh, it will be um, uh, it will be appearing here in the left side as a kind of a modular view. Uh, so that's the purpose of uh, this particular uh, window or uh, section or panel. 
and the right side uh, view is there we will be um, uh, majorly coding all our uh, uh, capital programs so uh, firstly to see um, in this particular video we will be focusing on the uh, timer function okay so what is a timer function so timer functions are used to cyclically send a message or set of actions in a specific periodic time intervals for example if you wanted to send a particular message in a specific defined periodicity you can use the timer functions um, so we will be having two different uh, uh, timer functions. So one is called the set timer and the other one is the cancel timer. So as the name suggests, set timer function can be directly used to cyclically send the message in a, in a specific defined time interval. So what the syntax it says, the syntax says it should be a void, set timer is the function name and then inside that you will find the two arguments so one argument uh, the argument one will be like the timer name and then the second argument is the duration so how long you wanted to uh, how frequent that you wanted to uh, execute this function in a recurrence manner so that is the uh, syntax of the set timer okay let us see a live example about how the set timer works okay first of all um, in order to uh, start with this uh, with the set timer or the timer function uh, it has uh, two different categories one is that you need to declare this timer okay so i will say first of all you have to type in ms timer and then the timer name so here in this case i uh, uh, i put a specific uh, timer name as uh, timer underscore VDC A3. So this is my timer name. So once if you have declared this timer, uh, you will see a green highlighted uh, or warning which says about uh, uh, timer VDC underscore A3 has no corresponding on timer. So it needs an on timer function to be defined so when i typed the on timer immediately i could see the uh, timer which we have declared so th that timer name is now visible okay now enter onto it and then uh, this particular open and uh, close brackets are just meant for uh, uh, to say uh, this is the uh, the code that we are going to use in order to run inside this timer so that is the purpose of it and one second it's on timer yes uh, okay um. okay what's happening here on timer yeah sorry okay on timer and then uh, the name of the timer function so after we do it um, here um, for instance if i wanted to send a message in a cyclic manner so that is the purpose of this timer as i said earlier so here we are going to use some sort of uh, uh, i'm going to take one particular message format and then I'm going to output this message uh, through this timer function. So here I'm going to use, I'm going to create, create a particular message object which I wanted to output in this timer function. Okay, for that I use a message as a command, as uh, is, is a type, object type and then here I'm going to select one message. So since I took the uh, timer name as VDC underscore A3, I took the message as also uh, VDC underscore A3 and I am going to create an object for this particular message. So it is like a temp underscore VDC underscore A3. So what it does is this particular object will inherit all the properties of all the properties or, sig or the uh, signal values of this particular VDC A3 message itself. So wherever if I am in need of uh, calling the message, I don't need to 
call this uh, message directly instead I can use this object to inherit the data so here what I am going to do is I am going to output output ok output is a command to uh, send or publish the uh, message and then what I am going to output I am going to output this particular object so I copy this object and paste it over here ok so now my timer function is ready um, but is it all that uh, what we need if I compile it I need to save it firstly and then I compile it I didn't find any uh, compilation errors now it is all set uh, for, for run but uh, in this on timer uh, we didn't call a recursive timer so timer when I when we set when we say uh, inside the on timer we need to uh, call the set timer function which we had seen it earlier so set timer and then we need to specify the timer name and the duration as I said earlier the timer name is timer underscore VDC underscore A3 and the duration the periodic time interval I am going to put it as 20 uh, 20 in the sense it is 20 milliseconds here if you wanted to uh, do it in the in a time interval of uh, 1 second then you can put it as 1000 over here or 2 seconds means 2000 over here as a argument ok now if I run it, run this particular function what it does is um, this particular on timer will run recursively and then it will publish the message bdc underscore a3 so this is what it will happen but ok let us just check in the configuration I already linked the sample uh, file and I just filtered out specifically this VDC underscore A3 uh, message just to show you how it works when you type when you hit the F9 uh, button it just runs now what happens I don't see this particular message running it running on a cyclic manner no it's not running uh, what is the issue here the issue is we have defined the uh, time of function but what is the triggering point so where it will be triggered so I have to call this timer first of all this on timer has to be first I have to call only then uh, it will come into this particular function and then it will run the codes inside this on timer function but the triggering point for this on timer itself it's not present so okay now we have to define the triggering point so where I have uh, where I can uh, trigger this one so this is where I am going to use a on start on uh, I am not sure why I see this on ok I go to here right click on it and then uh, right click on the system then you will find the event new event handler and I am going to create it as on start on start uh, structure has been created um, from the uh, module now I am going to call this set timer function here to trigger the timer function so at the on the start of the measurement so what is the purpose of on start is that soon when the measurement starts first thing it, it does is it executes the code inside this on start structure and after that it goes to the next corresponding functions so this is our triggering point that's why I define the set timer function inside on start function now let's just compile it and then I don't find any errors compilation errors now we will run let me hit the F9 button now I see like cyclically for every 20 millisecond duration I am sending this VDC underscore A3 message but the message has been sent but there is no values updated because I am not updating any of the signals inside the message what I have done is only have updated or I published the message itself so there are again some ways in order to update the signals let us see what it is ok now we can also have the option to 
access some of the signals inside this message and then we can define some values or write some values inside it. So I am calling the object again temp underscore VDC underscore A3 which, rep which represents the VDC underscore A3 message itself and when you click the dot when you type dot you will see all the signals inside this VDC underscore A3 okay let me select any one of the signal so let me select RR okay I have the VNSP dot now this PHYS it denotes the physical value I am going to write it as 50 okay um, let me compile it I didn't find any errors now uh, I will not see it reflected over here unless or otherwise I stop the Kano configuration I stop it and then I run it again now the file is compiled now you see I am not only publishing the VDC underscore A3 but also I am writing the signals and then publishing it so which particular signal that we wrote it's wheel speed RR the value of 50 so in the physical value it has been written as 49.9587 rpm okay that's what it's been written so you see it's RR the same way let us also add another signal or update another signal with RL dot HYS equal to 100 for example <coughs> let's compile there is no compilation error and we will stop the kernel configuration I'll start it again now you see the RL value is updated as 99 and RR value is updated as 49 and then we are sending the message in a cyclic manner of every 20 milliseconds this this particular message is put in the CAN channel so this is what we call it as a set timer function okay now there is another function called cancel timer so uh, what what does this cancel timer does <coughs> so cancel timer uh, as the name suggests it will cancel the timer function so what is the syntax of this cancel timer it is void cancel timer inside that you will be having only one argument which is the timer name which particular timer that you wanted to cancel so uh, with this particular cancel timer you can call any particular timer which is active which you wanted to stop it so for that purpose we use this cancel timer so uh, let us see uh, the cancel timer so cancel timer uh, we will see it along with some of the even based um functions for instance let me uh, try an even handler of on key okay on key when i say it's nothing but on key event key press event let me type uh, let me uh, assign it as a for instance if i press a key from the keyboard uh, this particular the, the the lines under this function will be executed so here uh, I will uh, uh, add the cancel timer cancel timer function which particular timer I wanted to cancel I wanted to cancel this particular timer I just need to mention only the timer name alone that is sufficient okay now let me compile this okay I don't find any errors compilation error let me uh, stop the kernel configuration and then start it again now my compiled the latest code is active in this configuration now if you see like every 20 millisecond the VDC A3 uh, message has been transmitted cyclically and now if I wanted to cancel it I am going to press the A key okay uh, just see it over here you will find the A button over here see I pressed once now if you see here you don't see the message transmitting in a cyclic manner anymore it's been cancelled because the timer function which is publishing this VDC underscore A3 message in a cyclic manner it's now cancelled means it is now inactive so those piece of code will be inactive this particular piece of code is now being cancelled with this triggering event with on key A okay so now it got cancelled 
So that is the cancel time of function. So hope you understand about the cancel time of function. So let us see the other functions. We have an on start which we had already seen uh, in our code like the code under this on start will be executed soon when the measurement starts. When I say the measurement starts is the kind of measurement starts. Okay, uh, soon when you start it, the, the, the codes inside that will become active and it will execute one by one in the on start function. The next one is on message. So this we haven't seen. Uh, so we will see the uh, on message. Uh, what is the purpose of this on message event? So uh, code under this function will be executed based on the precept of a valid can message. So here on you have to mention the message name and then you have to put a code inside uh, whatever the code that you want to execute under this uh, on message. Uh, it will be executed. Uh, provided if you uh, if you if if the if your code uh, encounters that particular message, so after uh, soon it receives this message, uh, it executes the code inside this function. Let's see a live example on it. Okay, now I'm going to add one on message event. So for that, go to the system, right click on it. You will find a, a new. Uh, sorry, uh, it's not in the uh, system. You have to go to the can. Yeah, uh, go to the can and right click on it, and then you will find a new event handler. Go towards it, and you will find the on message. Click on it, and you will find a structure here. So uh, here, uh, in the on message, uh, which particular message that you are going to look? So I am going to type again the same VDC underscore A three. Okay, so this is a message that I am going to look for. So. Uh, Based on the reception of the BDC underscore A3, I'm going to print something, something, anything that you wanted to write it, you can do it. But uh, what I'm going to do it is, I'm, I'm just going to, uh, for instance, I'm going to write, uh, uh, write is a function which will print uh, the uh, uh, content in the right window of your uh, kind of configuration. So inside the right, I'm going to, uh, update some message like um, uh, received okay received or I would say like can message received so now if I compile it I don't see any compilation error what it does is based on the reception of the VDC underscore a3 this uh, this can can message received this data will be displayed in the right window and this is what it will be done let me run it now okay now you see uh, since it is cyclically happening over here you will see the can message received in a regular manner okay soon when I stop it this will be stopped uh, we already uh, have a uh, key event to st cancel the timer. Let me press the A button. You see, I press the A button. So now the cyclical update is also stopped and also the write message is also stopped. So that is the purpose of the on message. So on message can be used in a wider manner, but uh, uh, you can also uh, look for certain signals based on the signal values. You can execute some piece of code here. That also you can do it. Let me show you one example for it. Uh, let me access one of the signal inside this BTC underscore A3, which is nothing but clock function. So let me use a clock as a variable where I'm going to use, I'm already into the message. So I'm going to use the this dot uh, clock, okay, uh, clock signal. And then uh, you will find an error over here because I'm going to copy this content or uh, let me take another example of uh, the BDC. Okay. Let me take the uh, vehicle speed RR here. And then I'm going to uh, put it in the speed RR underscore. Um, W. So this is a variable. Um, the value 
of the wheel speed will be updated or uh, will be printed in this right window. So I'm going to add, a, I'm going to put an int, I'm going to declare it right at the top in the variable section so that I can, uh, now I will not see any compilation error and I wanted to print it over here. So let me print something like wheel speed RR. Okay. Then uh, since it is an integer value, I'm going to put it as percentage D comma the this particular variable. Now if I compile it, I don't see any compilation error. The purpose here is that based on the reception of this value, okay, the value of uh, the, the wheel speed signal, uh, this right message will be printed with the value itself. Let me run it. You see, it's periodically been updated based on the values uh, from the wheel speed. Uh, since it is, uh, uh, it's a floating value, I define it as an uh, in integer type. And so you see it as a 1199. Uh, let us just correct this one here. I'm going to declare it as float because of its type. And here also I'm going to put it as percentage F, save and run it again. Okay, now let us look on the other function. Uh, okay, there is one more function called, uh, one more um, signal, we have it inside this VTC A3 is a clock. Um, the purpose of this clock is to um, like on a periodic uh, instance, this uh, the clock has to get increased and the clock value will be taken as an input for the CRC, which is a cyclic redundancy check and then it will be uh, used for the uh, um, for the uh, proper reception of the message content. For that purpose, uh, we use the clock. Uh, let me show you how this clock can be uh, cyclically transmitted through the uh, timer function. So here, I have a clock function and here I am going to use one variable um, in order to store the previous uh, clock value. So I have a variable called VDC underscore A3 plus 1. So when I meant about plus 1, it is nothing but the older value plus 1 that we are going to increment it over here for this current cycle. Uh, we are not going to use any for loop or uh, or while loop here because uh, it's going to in every periodic uh, instance this particular value has to increment in a um, in a linear way. Okay, so that is the uh, uh, intention. So let me put it as int and then okay, it is declared. Uh, now in the next step, I will use a conditional check in order to ensure that. If it is greater than, for instance, I'm going to call the same temp underscore temp underscore BDC dot clock. So dot physic, sorry, dot sick. If it is greater than 15, then I am going to reset it to 0 because it has to start again from 0. Okay, so here I am going to assign the same with the value as 0. If it is not greater than 15, then I am going to out, then I am going to update the old clock. BDC underscore A3 with the with the value of the temp underscore. So this is to store the previous value, so that in the next instance uh, I will be updating the uh, clock value with the old value plus one. That's an incrementation. So uh, now finally, uh, what it will uh, let us compile. We'll see if there is any errors. No, there is no error. 
let me run the now you see uh, the clock is getting incremented um, uh, from 0 to 15 and then again uh, resetting back to 0 and then again incrementing one after the other so that is the uh, that is how we uh, uh, we we could uh, simulate the uh, message with the clock and the uh, crc but crc i will touch it in another video uh, but that's how uh, it has been done uh, let us see what are all the other functions uh, on message we are seeing on signal it is also something similar to that of the on message um, so here uh, in the on signal uh, event it's like the event procedures or the code under this function will be executed based on the signal change okay so whenever there is a change in the signal then the codes under this on signal will be executed so that is the purpose of on signal okay uh, and then the next one is on key so on key we have already seen it's again an um, it's an event triggering point triggering point uh, where if you press it if you do a key press uh, that will trigger this event and uh, the code under this on key uh, function will be executed uh, when you press the uh, key this is what i have assigned it as uh, uh, with the with the a key which is over here so on this particular key press i am writing some code over here uh, which will be triggered so whenever i press the uh, key press any key, any key which is defined here so uh, that is about uh, that um, so almost we have come to the uh, conclusion of this particular video um, so in, in in the next video we will see more in details about the uh, other capital functions and its purpose uh, hope you got some insight on the uh, timer functions and on event uh, in uh, Kenu uh, through the capital programming so if you like this video please hit the like button and uh, for more such videos uh, please click on the uh, subscribe button uh, so that you will be notified on the upcoming videos on the capital programming functions so if you are interested please check on my youtube channel uh, where you will find all my videos on vector Keno and capital programming thank you all uh, see you in another video